hear about this commercial airplane with passengers that crashed in Israel. A team of rescuers was immediately deployed you know, to try to find survivors. All of a sudden, one of the teams, they hear a noise coming from the very back of the plane. Specifically, as they approach, they realize that it's the bathroom of the plane. Say, oh, there may be some, someone stuck in there, and look, sounds like it's alive. So they approach there, they knock at the door of this bathroom, and from the inside, the voice of a man said, yes. I said, sir, please open. This is the Magenda Vida Dome. And he said, go away. I already sent a check last month. <laughs> I want to talk to you today about with all your money. <laughs> That's the name of the sermon. With all your money. You see, uh, I don't know if you ever realize when you read the Shema Israel, no, no, seriously, when we read the Shema Israel, we said, Ve'avta et Adonai Eloecha, Bechol Levavcha, Ubechol Navshecha, Ubechol Meodecha. And you shall love Adonai your God, Bechol Levavcha, with all your heart, Bechol Navshecha, with all your soul, and Bechol Meodecha. Usually translated with all your might. What does it mean with all your might? Well, interestingly enough, the word me'od, used me'odecha, it's also translated as material possessions. So in other words, the Shema says you should love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your money, with all your material possessions. In other words, it's a complete commitment with God and with the Torah. And this is very interesting because the Shema talk about the complete commitment. At that not that's not necessarily the case of how we are committed to God. And because sometimes I realize that we love com coming to shul. We love having a spiritual experience. Sometimes we don't really connect with spiritual experience, but we love Jewish ethics. And this is a different way to connect. But for some reason, for many people, when we need to connect with Judaism with our pockets, <laughs> when it's expected from us to contribute, to make something happen in the Jewish world, sometimes when we go there, we get a little bit uncomfortable. So yes, there are different commitments, but it's not complete, and our commitments is not in balance. Have you received, the, did you receive the package from Lidor Vador? that we are in the campaign right now. Did you receive the package at home? How did that make you feel? You know, I realized some people said, this is great. I can't wait to call the synagogue to make a donation. And some people said, oh, here they go again asking for money. Right? It's something, it, I, I said, why? It, uh, it, but but it's, it's a reality that sometimes we feel uncomfortable when there is somebody knocking at our, at our door asking for money. This is funny, because I always thought that Lidor Vador means from door to door. <laughs> they were going asking for money. <laughs> but it's a, it, it's a reality. It makes us feel uncomfortable. I know that some people told me that when they are doing the service, and they see in the chat the link popping up. It says, if you want to make a donation, click here. And they said, how dare you? That's not religious at all. Well, the Shema Israel just mentioned that our commitment with Judaism involves the heart, the soul, and our pockets as well is all part of the same experience. So uh, this is interesting that the same progression of all the aspects that conform the Jewish experience were presented in the Torah in these last three weeks. There is a progression coming, starting all the way with Parsha Itro. Remember? That was three weeks ago. Itro, we read the, right there. I don't know if Marvin can point it out with the camera. I have no idea what the camera is pointing. But it's uh, the Ten Commandments. That was the experience of revelation. That was the strongest experience where people felt the presence of God in human history. So Itro was all about spirituality. Fast forward one week, the last week. 
when we read Parsha Mishpatim. Mishpatim wasn't necessarily about revelation. It was all about laws to regulate society. In other words, that kind of law that the rabbis called Ben Adam le Havero, from one to another. Yitro, they call it Ben Adam la Makom, from people to God, and then Mishpatim, from people to people. Things that regulate our interactions. Those kind of laws. It's almost like civil law. And then this week, week number three, is when God said, well now, open your wallet and make, it, and make everything happen. It's great to find a connection with God, but where is that going to happen? Well, you have to build a sanctuary for that to happen. Where are you going to receive the reminder that you have to be an ethical person? Well, you can to the sanctuary, but make that sanctuary happen. So it's interesting because Yitro and Mishpatim, Ben Adam la Makom and Ben Adam la Chavedo, the rabbi said, well, it's actually two sides of the same coin, but you still need the, need the coin to have those two sides. This is this week's Parsha, the Parsha that is reminding us that the Judaism is not just spirituality and ethics. We need sometimes material things to make things happen. And I said, but why I still feel uncomfortable? Well, I believe that sometimes the way we practice Judaism is dysfunctional. It's a dysfunction. And you know what dysfunction is? And I actually searched for this one in the dictionary. So let me read it for you. Dysfunction says, unhealthy interpersonal behavior or interaction. In other words, it says that there is something about the way we practice our Judaism that is not right. That is not right. So when we feel that one of these three aspects is failing or make us feel uncomfortable, that means that there is something that we are neglecting and that something needs to be taken care of. Sometimes what happens is we don't find spirituality of Judaism. Well, maybe we have to push ourselves to find spiritual experiences. Sometimes we don't connect with Jewish ethics, which is a big problem. So in that case, we need to push ourselves to study and to understand the importance of being ethical human beings. Or sometimes we feel uncomfortable opening our wallet. Well, in that case, we should push ourselves to become generous people. And I realize that different people excel at different one of these three aspects. Some people excel at being spiritual Jews. Some people excel at being ethical Jews. And some people excel at sending a check, and that's all they do to connect with their Judaism. But you see, concentrating in only one of the three aspects is a dysfunction. The idea and the reminder of these three weeks, one, after the other, is that the three aspects are equally important. And the three aspects should be part of our life to experience a functional Judaism. So if you are spiritual and ethical, good for you. But if you need to add generosity to your practice, this is a reminder. And we have an opportunity here to be generous as Jews, to support Jewish causes. Or uh, I remember uh, a comment of a rabbi that once said, addressing to his congregation uh, in the middle of a campaign. He was saying, well, I have good news and bad news. So the good news is we have enough money to finish our project. The bad news, still in your pockets. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, everyone.